All right, so let's get into it. Today's topic, today's training, this week's training is uh, how to put your lead generation on autopilot. You know, my journey in real estate, uh, and by the way, I'm Lars Hedenborg, founder of Real Estate B-School. And no matter where you are looking uh, or watching this training, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, when I look back on my journey, uh, you know, building a business and, and taking that mindset of building a business versus, you know, kind of seeing myself as a a real estate agent and you know just doing home sales i can pin my success to what i'm going to cover today i wasn't a cold caller i didn't you know all of the paid lead gen sources out there just were increasingly just looking to get more and more of our commission checks and they always increased their prices and the effectiveness of all those paid lead gen sources always went down over the years um and so so this is it this is the topic i'm going to give away um all the scorecards I, i've used in the business, my social uh, content calendar, um, all of it uh, is, is yours. I, I want to impact your business uh, in the most meaningful way possible. So let's get the party started uh, here. So let me, um, all right, let's get uh, ready to rock and roll. So uh, how to systematically generate high quality buyer and seller leads. Yes, in this challenging market, right? That is, uh, that's always, uh, we always bring relevancy uh, to all uh, that we do. And this is the stuff that works. There's no high in any of this. So, um, all right. So make sure no matter where you are uh, consuming this, make sure you type dashboards wherever it is. It's YouTube or Facebook or uh, LinkedIn. Type dashboards and you will grab a free copy uh, of all the dashboards. And I'll go through those uh, uh, towards the end, how to use each one of those uh, tools. So the question, the guiding question I have for you is, how are you thinking about your business in terms of your ability to scale the business or scale your lead generation efforts without you doing all of the heavy lifting, right? In a typical uh, real estate agent business, they're not generating more opportunities than they could possibly service because they're not thinking about their lead generation as a system. And that's really what I want to focus on today is letting go of the traditional model of success for a real estate agent. And how do we generate so much opportunity systematically that growth and financial freedom and ultimately time freedom and your ability to impact at a much higher level than you're impacting right now, your family and your community. That, that is what I'm going to push you towards. So let's get after it. So why does this matter? You know, this topic of putting systems in place in your business that generate high quality buyer and seller leads. That's, that's what we're talking about. The, the first thing I would say is that we don't have any friends, you know, we think, and I'm a great consumer, but we think that these lead providers and the constant and never ending incessant marketing to our industry of like this, try this thing, this tech uh, bolt on piece or this whatever thing, this lead source, you know, Zillow, realtor.com, all the referral lead sources now, right? They've shifted their model even to take more of our commission check. None of it is done with like our interest first and foremost in mind. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that they want to help real estate agents. Like I'm sure Zillow wants to help real estate agents, but their goal is to drive as much cash into their pocket as possible, right? And their models are set up to do that. So in general, we don't have any friends and we are in a business where we can't run our business with like marginal profits. So we have to be running our real estate business on an economic model that works. And that only allows us, and I've done this for a decade. I've helped top agents and real estate team leaders scale their businesses to the point where they have complete financial freedom. There are rules that we need to follow when it comes to the economic model. And we can only spend 10% of our top line GCI on lead generation, right? So we don't have the ability to pay out a 30 to 35% referral fee. Even if you think it's free, it's not, it's literally 35%, right? So the home lights and the, the different uh, ideal agent and the, the different lead aggregators, right? They're just doing a better job getting in between us and the end consumer. That's all they're doing and they're charging us for it and they're making a crazy, crazy profit. Bottom line, as an industry, our service is really, really poor. So in general, hopefully this is not you if you're consuming this, in general, we're not providing a level of service that is in line with other service
service providers in other industries that are knocking the socks off consumers, right? And another thing about real estate agents, we want to put ourselves out there as the end all be all, right? Like the, the, this more cattle, less hat, like it's, it's the, the, the guy that is wearing the, the nicest hat, but he has nothing to back it up, right? He's not successful. That's generally agents want to put on this image that they've got it all together and they're running these crazy businesses, but they're running themselves ragged in the process and they don't have anything to show for it financially. So there's a big, big problem there. And the good thing about where we've landed as a society and in business in particular is that it's like going back in time. And there's a quote from uh, Gary Vee that I believe we're going through, uh, living through the early days of a dramatic culture shift that's bringing us back full circle. And the world we live and work in now operates in a way that's surprisingly similar to, to the one our great grandparents knew. Social media has transformed our world into one great big small town dominated as all vibrant, town, vibrant towns used to be by the strength of relationships, the currency of caring, and the power of word of mouth. And so what we're going to talk about today is hinged on this return to and away from, you know, the, the, the mass media, the look at how great I am. I'm the number one agent. I'm, you know, me, me, me. It's, it's, it's agents are a show of like me monsters. We're just like, oh, we're, we're the best thing ever, right? We're the, we're the gift to our communities, right? That's not what we need to do to be successful going forward. So in terms of what you should know, I think I've got five points here that we need to rethink the funnel, specifically the game that we're playing. You know, this is, if you're going to screenshot uh, one of my shareables here, this is it. We are generating leads, however we generate leads. And then there's a, a five-step game that we need to play. We need to have conversations and set appointments, meet with those appointments, sign new clients, and then get our clients closed. The challenge is that most real estate agents think that between four and five is where the job of a real estate agent happens. It's when you get a client and you're showing them homes or you're trying to get their home sold. That is not where the game of business is won. The game of business is won much earlier in the process, setting up these oil wells up front, top of funnel, so that we can have endless supply of high quality buyer and seller leads and then put systems in place to convert them into clients and then do an amazing job systematically, not with you in the process between four and five, where they are lunatic raving fans. Go to the top of the mountain and scream your name and grab everyone they know and say that you need to be their real estate agent. That is the the, the process that we follow in Real Estate B-School. Um, so number two is that, are you really any different? When you look at all the agents out there, are you really doing anything different, right? When you consider that consumers are out there giving their money to other service providers, uh, there's top golf in my market. So I would not want to be a, a an old school driving range in a market that has a top golf, right? Top golf is like the, you know, they've got just a way upscale, 10X upscale facility. It's just like they've reinvented the, the driving range um, model, right? We also have a uh, lifetime fitness in our market. And I would not want to be at another gym when there's a lifetime fitness with cafes, with pickleball courts, tennis courts, multiple pools, um, everything you could imagine in terms of courses and yoga and Pilates and light, right? You just can't compete. And then they go to all these other businesses and get these amazing experiences is because every industry has up leveled their game. Then they come into your world and ha what happens? Are you even close to on par with those other, other businesses? And I'm not talking about physical facilities, right? I'm talking about the experience they get with you versus other real estate agents. That brings me to the third point here in terms of what you need to know is that you must provide a service to your buyer and seller clients that they are just blown away with how awesome, legendary, and memorable it is. In, in our business, we implement implemented from the get-go when we when we work with a client out of the gate we are making a promise to deliver an experience to them that they couldn't imagine being any better. And so we have a document called the High Performance Promise that we would have them sign as part of our buyer packets and our listing packets. And we would get referrals before the transaction closed. Typically, we'd get one or two solid referrals.
referrals in hand before they leave the closing table. So we're able to generate two to three transactions for every transaction we close. And that allows us to bring our marketing spend down that allowed us to get out of paid lead gen sources that allowed us to um, completely get out of radio, right? And some of the mass media that worked for a while until it didn't and until returns went to went to crap. So the fourth point here is that social proof. It is the game, right? You have to deliver an experience to clients that they're going to put their digital, uh, well, their digital opinion of you online, right? So when I started this in uh, this business, I've since exited, uh, but this was my real estate team. Uh, I had a business partner as well, high performance real estate advisors. And when I finally, the light bulb clicked and I had an experience with a new dentist, I went to a new dentist office where they just, they knocked my socks off with their service and they asked me for a five, five star review. And I learned that the owners were getting away from the same radio stations that I was on because they were generating more business from the testimonials that were on Google. When we started this, we we were at about 60 reviews and you can see that there are over 2000 reviews right now. So do you have an, do you have a social proof, a digital imprint um, or digital presence when it comes to uh, past buyers and sellers and people that know you, like you and trust you saying good things about you online? If you don't, you're not in the game. You're not in the game. I think the closest, the closest to us, I don't even think there's another that has over a thousand. Your goal is to get more, twice as many, four, five, 10 times as many as your nearest competitor in your market. And you add a little bit of Google local service ads to it and it is, uh, it's just game over. So the last point here, this goes along along the line of like agents wanting to be me monsters and it's all about them. Who's the hero in your business? Really quick story brand by Donald Miller taught me this, you know, this essentially marketing strategy that infiltrated everything in our business where instead of it being about how awesome, you know, me and my real estate team is, you know, how could we, we put the client in, in the story where they're the character they have a problem. They meet the guide, which is the real estate agent. They give have a clear plan documented. It calls them into action to make this decision to work with you. And it results in success when they work with you. And if they don't, you know, you can tell through testimonials, you can, you can tell stories of being the second, third agent in and how it didn't work out before and how once you went, you know, so there's this infiltrates all that you do. You do case studies, you do video testimonials, your whole world will transform once you put the client as the hero and and you're just the guide. You're just guiding them along this journey, right? It's 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 a radical change in how most businesses market. In terms of how we get there tactically, it's all about systems. If you guys have ever heard me train, I am fanatical about this book, Atomic Habits by James Clear. Everything worth having comes down to not your goals, but your systems, right? You do not rise to the level of your goals you fall to the level of your systems. And in the book, the, the the running shoes will make sense if you read the book, which I highly, highly recommend. So first off, we have to begin with the end in mind. So uh, one of the tools that you'll get for free when you comment below uh, is our marketing ROI multiplier. So we had the ability essentially to take our different lead sources, plug in the cost, predict how many leads we generate, how many homes were either pending or closed, and we could track, we could forecast and then track what was working in the business. Because bottom line, the cash that comes into your business follows the calendar of content you put out there. And there are two forms of content. One is just your marketing. So this is your touch program, you know, uh, Gary Keller, 33 touch, right? We upped it to a almost 60 touch this year. It was a 57 touch, um, but it's all calendared out right? We know exactly what week of what month and what is going out. Same thing on the social side. This showed 91, but it was probably double that with repurposed content and, and whatnot, right? So it's all baked in before the year starts. There's no guesswork in any of this, no guesswork whatsoever. And then the last point here is that we need to know our numbers. Every week, religiously, we would run a marketing scorecard. So we'd look at all the inbound seller leads, all the inbound buyer leads, all 
all the inbound referrals. Notice there's no, not a lot of outbound, no outbound. So I, I was never one for cold calling. It was, it works, right? There are coaches that teach that. Um, I think we're in the era where you can put systems in place that will attract buyers and sellers to you and the cold call, you know, that that's that's not the world that I excelled in. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not necessarily the one that's going to teach you that, but I can teach you to have a ton of inbound uh, seller leads. You can see it in this week in particular, I think I left some data in there. There's 43 uh, sellers that called us off our marketing, which is unbelievably awesome. And then there were 68 inbound buyer leads. And this week we had three referrals. So really, really awesome. Um, really, really powerful. And then we tracked, you know, all the lead sources, exactly what we had pending by lead source. You can see our clients for life program. We had 590, uh, closed rather, 593,000 um, of GCI uh, closed at that point in this. So yours will be different, but you have to track it. You have to commit to tracking it. Really quick story. And I, I had the honor to work with uh, Kirby and Christina probably for a few years in their journey. Uh, when I met them first time, it was just the two of them and a licensed uh, admin and maybe a showing agent. So it might've been four of them on the team. Uh, they have since just like knock, knock the cover off the ball. In 2001, they did 777 transactions for 7.7 million GCI. And the reason I bring them up as a sort of a case study, and they, they did a little bit less in 2022, but still over 700 transactions, um, is because all of their stuff is systems-based. All of these tools, they use a, a version of it in their business. Their touch program, their social media is all preset, right? There's not a lot of guesswork. They have a marketing coordinator, but they don't have someone that needs to come up with magic all the time, which is like what we think we need to do as real estate agents. We need to come up with magic and how do I do social media? And like, it's all pre-baked. You just got to commit to building the system. So grab a copy, just comment dashboards wherever you're consuming this. And uh, we will get in touch with you. We'll either chat and send you the link uh, to opt in to get our real estate marketing dashboard. So um, you guys know that if you ever decide that you want to run further, faster, all we have to give you is a business growth assessment. It's just a, a time that we get to spend with you uh, where we're going to dig into your business. We're going to look at where you are today, where you want to be in the future, what might be holding you back. This is not a gimmicky, hypey call. It's just the stuff that works. So go to rebsgrowthassessment.com. That's rebsgrowthassessment.com. My friends, I will see you on the next training. Much love, much respect. We'll talk soon.